Hey guys, SimCutter here. So today we are going to take a deep dive into my personal tips into how to be productive as a developer. Uh, these are tools and methods that I've used uh, throughout the years and it has truly really helped me to be a bit more productive with my time so that I can have more time to, I mean, dedicate to YouTube, uh, go training, whatever. So uh, time is money and obviously uh, it is important to, to be good at handling it and to optimize it. So yeah, let's do it. So the first thing that you should really do, and I myself am not really that good with it, but I try to be, is to use a good time tracker. And now this is important for a couple of reasons. The first one is that, well, if you are working as a freelancer, for example, it is important to know exactly how much time you dedicate to each project. Um, obviously, that's the only way that you'll be able to provide a good uh, estimate of your cost for each and every project that you do, and for your client to also have the, um, a good way to know how much time you actually put into a project, which sometimes is not that easy for someone that's not technical to understand and to evaluate. The second part is that obviously you don't want to dedicate more time to a project than you should and you don't want to dedicate more time to your nine to five job than you should, wherever you have agreed with your client. So it is really important to keep good track of your time. And for this, I use uh, an extension on VS Code called Wacka Time. Um, it helps you to understand how much time you spend in VS Code. Uh, and to keep track of it over time. So uh, it is good. Uh, however, you have to take it with a grain of salt because it only tracks the amount of time that you spend on VS Code. It doesn't track the amount of time that you spend on meetings, it doesn't track the amount of time that you spend researching stuff. So uh, as a good basis for how much time you actually spend working on a single day when you look at the data from Waka Time, I would say that uh, for me personally, the rule that I always use is 70-30 or 30-70, and I explain why. So if I'm doing something new that I'm not sure of uh, how to do it, or it's a new tool, a new framework, whatever, and I have to work with it, I usually will spend 70% of the time researching and 30% of the time writing code. Meaning that when I look at the dashboard from Waka time, what I will come up with, with is that if I work three hours in a day, then I can add 70% more for research if I'm learning something new, right? Three hours, four hours, whatever, it doesn't matter. Now, if I'm doing something that I'm used to, then I usually only have to spend like 30% of the time researching and 70% of the time I'm actually writing code. This is a quick guideline. Obviously, it changes from developer to developer. Uh, on top of this, you have to add the time that you spend in meetings. Now, uh, most people don't count it, especially developers, but time spending in, in meetings is time that you spend working. So on top of the calculation that you uh, did to calculate how much time you spent coding and researching, you also have to add the time that you spent in meetings throughout the week. Uh, and that's pretty easy to, to do with any calendars. I use Google Calendar, really good, it gives you an insight into the time that you actually spend in meetings throughout the week. So yeah, that's something that's really important. Now that we've touched on calendars, it is a good time to speak a bit about Google Calendar, which is the one that I use personally, even though I'm sure the other calendars can do this as well. So Google Calendar has this little feature, but really cool feature that's called focus time. Focus time allows you to slot times throughout the day where you don't want to have meetings and you don't want people to schedule meetings where you have to be in. You just want to spend time focused on your code and on your work. I use this a lot to make sure that people understand that even though uh, I'm working, I need to dedicate time to actually develop. Uh, another thing that I always do is I allocate time to go to the gym and all sorts of small things so that people know exactly when I'm available or not and when I want to be available or not. So I have a slot in the evening where people can schedule meetings, uh, any customer can go in, uh, pinpoint a meeting and I'll be there. Outside that range, I won't. 
uh, that's pretty easy. And if they want to reach uh, out to me outside of that um, range of uh, hours that I have available for meetings, then they will have to do it through Slack or any other mean like that. So yeah, that's really useful, not for use necessarily, but for everyone around you to understand that, well, you have to develop code. You can spend your entire day in meetings. One other important aspect is to not be in meetings that you don't have to necessarily be in. If you are not adding value to a meeting or taking value out of a meeting, then excuse yourself and exit the meeting. Um, now, I do have my gripes with uh, Elon Musk, but that's something that he talks about a lot and I actually agree with, even though I disagree with him on a bunch of things. And I agree with him because you spend so much time in meetings and people tend to schedule meetings for every single little thing that you get to the end of the day and you spend like five hours stuck in meetings, but you haven't really write, written any code because you have to always warm up, then go to a meeting, then you warm up and you start coding. You actually write some code. Well, now we have a meeting. So you spend so much time in meetings that uh, it becomes almost impossible to write good code. So one thing that people should be more uh, understanding of and more willing to do is to exit meetings and allow people to exit meetings. It is not a personal attack on anyone that's uh, present in a meeting. It is sim simply you making sure that you are bringing the most value to your customers that you can. Now to something that's a bit out of the range of everything that we've uh, talked about, which has to do mostly with the customers and whatnot. Uh, one thing that um, I've been doing ever since I started coding, really, and I truly do believe it is helpful, even though I've talked with some friends and colleagues and they don't really see a point in it. But for me, it has helped, which is to separate your environments within your PC. So I have an environment for my work. I have an environment for SimCoder and I have a personal environment. Each of these environments has only the things that I need to use them. So in my work environment, I have uh, Slack, I have um, VS Code, obviously, I have all of the tools that I need to do my job and nothing else. Whereas in SimCoder, I have all of the editing tools, I have Photoshop, I have, again, VS Code because, well, this is a channel about programming, so I couldn't escape it. And then in my personal environment, I have streaming apps, I have Google Chrome and nothing much else, actually. And this is good for me personally, because it forces me to, when I go into an environment, I know that I'm only going to do that one thing. If I go into my work environment, it is for work. If I go into SimCoder, it is for SimCoder work. And if I go into the personal environment, I know that I'm going to take some time off and I'm not going to receive any notifications on Slack from customers pinging me to do whatever. Um, now, this is good uh, for a couple of reasons, because uh, if you have like five minutes where you are waiting for a pipeline to run or whatever, if you have to change environment, it is too much work and you generally won't do it. It will force you to do something else related to work and focus on it. And in the other way around, if you are in your uh, time off and you want to watch a series or something, you don't feel the urge to open up VS Code because you don't have it installed. You have to change environments. Now, this might seem really, really small and something that you can obviously go around it, and you can. However, it is enough for you to think, do I really want to do it? Spin up a new environment, wait for everything to load, open up the apps, so on and so forth. So it is, for me personally, enough to deter me from when I'm in my time off going to work and when I'm in work going to time off. One other thing is to have a clean setup. You don't have to have the most expensive computer, best monitor, anything like that. You just have to have a setup that's clean, that works for you and that's comfortable. If you do that, then it will be an inviting place to work and you'll enjoy spending a bunch of hours at your desk. Um, so. Again, you don't have to have the most expensive setup. That's one of the, um, the things that most developers tend to go into the rabbit hole of. Uh, I myself have that, so I have a, a big ass screen behind me, but you don't need that. Uh, that's the truth of it. I started to develop 
in with a Toshiba satellite PC that had an i3 processor. It was terrible. It didn't have a graphics card. It had like four gigs of RAM. It was slow. Yeah, it was, but it worked. The most important thing is that you feel comfortable in the environment that you are working in. One other thing is to make sure you take frequent breaks. They don't have to be long. They can be just two minute breaks where you don't think about anything work related every hour or so. But this will help you to be more productive. Um, um, I actually remember reading a study from, I can't really remember the faculty, but if I find it, I'll put it in the description for sure, uh, where they said that people that have meetings back to back without five minute breaks between them are actually way less productive and they feel way more tired than people that have to work for long, a longer period of time, but have five minute breaks between meetings. And the same goes with coding. So make sure you get up um, and actually do anything else other than coding. Uh, if you don't like to uh, count the time that you have spent working, um, then you can use a trick that I personally use, which is actually to have a small bottle of water beside me. So I tr tend to drink a, lo a lot of water during the day. And by having a small bottle of water right next to me, uh, I'm forced to like every hour, get up, go fill up the bottle and come back. That's enough to just think about something else or better yet, not think about anything and to, to clear my mind a bit. So yeah, that's that tip I strongly suggest you start implementing. So the next one is one that um, last year I wouldn't have told you to do. Um, early this year, I bought this smartwatch. Um, and I didn't buy it for an, any productivity purpose. I just wanted to give it a shot because I had one years back and I didn't really like it. So I thought that, well, the hell with it. Let's buy one and let's see if they are any good. <laughs> but it came with an upside that I didn't expect, which is that I spent way less time on my phone than I used to. And I've reached the conclusion why that happens. Well, you see, I have the notifications from Slack and email going into my smartwatch. Uh, this means that whereas before I received the notification on my phone and I went into my phone and I looked at a notification and I ended up doing something else completely different that I didn't really have to do. Now, what I do is I look into the notification on the, the smartwatch and I can evaluate if it is important. And if I go into the device, my phone, or not, meaning I spend way less time on my phone because I don't waste it. I don't go into Slack on my phone and then five minutes later, I'm, I don't know, uh, reading through some article that's completely useless on that community. Um, so yeah, that's uh, an upside that I didn't expect. Obviously you don't have to buy this exact smartwatch. Uh, it is a Samsung Galaxy 5. You can buy a cheaper one, one that tells you notification. That's all you need. Um, and for me, this has truly really helped me to the point where I use my phone 30% less time during the week than I used to do. And I can see that in the settings on my phone, so I'm sure of it. Uh, and I can feel it in my day-to-day -day, uh, life. I use it a hell of a lot less. So there you go. These are the tips that have helped me be more productive over the years. And I hope that you can take something away from this video. Um, obviously, if you have anything else that you use on your day-to-day -day business that I didn't talk about in this video, then please do leave a comment down below. I'll make sure to pin any comment that has a tip that I really do enjoy and I do, truly do believe that other people should see and use. Other than that, don't forget to leave a subscribe and a like. Obviously, that helps you to not miss any content and it helps me to grow this channel so that I can provide more and more videos to you. So that's all. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye!